What's up everyone, Tara Roberts here with Fantasy Pros bringing you my week 14 waiver wire ads. Before we get started, be sure to like this video and subscribe to Fantasy Pros across all platforms. Now let's go ahead and dive right in. Number 10, Tevin Coleman. With Michael Carter down, the Jets' backfield is clearly led by Tevin Coleman. Coleman had 11 carries for 58 yards and caught three of his four targets for 19 yards. No other running back had more than one carry. Now, unfortunately, if you didn't take advantage of it last week, you're picking him up now against the New Orleans Saints, who are great against the run and struggling against the pass recently. So it's not really an ideal matchup, but a lead back is a lead back. And Michael Carter is the Jets' future, but the Jets aren't exactly really playing for much right now. There's no reason to rush Carter back, even once he's eligible to come off of IR. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Coleman as the lead back against Miami, who has been stronger recently, but not as tough against the run as New Orleans. Number nine, Kendrick Bourne. I record this video on early Monday, so unfortunately, I don't know the outcome of the Monday night game, and the Patriots do have a week 14 bye, so all of that said, this just kind of pushes Bourne back further in my list. But through week 12, Kendrick Bourne is a top 20 receiver in standard format and top 25 in full PPR. After the bye, they face Indianapolis, who is typically softer against the pass. And after that, another matchup with Buffalo, and then they face Jacksonville. So if you have room to stash him and playoff aspirations, there are a couple of solid matchups here where Bourne can be a valuable flex play. Number eight, Tyler Conklin. Tyler Conklin is actually tight end 13 on the year in PPR. He is lower rostered than guys like Jared Cook and Tyler Higby, despite outperforming both of them in total points and per game average. So with that said, if he's already performing at that level with both Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen playing at full capacity all season, and now he'll be able to be in the same offense without Thielen who suffered a high ankle sprain, wouldn't the best assumption here be that he should be the guy who's higher value to close out the season? Conklin suffers from low name recognition, as Irv Smith was the tight end that was supposed to be heading in as the tight end one this season. But Conklin has had a fairly solid season, and with Thielen out likely missing time, the touchdown opportunities are going to open up for the rest of the team, and Conklin can help close out the season for you. Number seven, Russell Gage. I was so excited for Russell Gage when he returned from his injury in week seven to the tune of four receptions for 67 yards and one touchdown, but he followed up that performance with zero targets and zero receptions, nixing him off of waiver priorities. And then he turned around in week nine and caught seven of eight targets for 64 yards, only to come back in week 10 and yet again have zero receptions. He seemed way too unreliable to roster, but for three weeks in a row now, Gage has had 22 receptions on 27 targets for a total of 241 yards with one touchdown, making him a top 10 receiver in PPR over that time frame. Do I necessarily trust it? Not particularly, but you simply can't ignore it. I am recommending picking up Gage off waivers. Number six, Don to Foreman. After a game with 19 carries for 109 yards, Dante Foreman is still less than 50% rostered in Yahoo leagues. We ran into a weird situation of that boom game coming right before a bye week, so that percentage didn't really jump as much as you would expect after such a huge game. Foreman and Dontrell Hillman led the Titans' backfield, and right now, they're the only factor. Coming out of the bye week, we do have Jeremy McNichols. We don't know exactly how McNichols will affect this offense when he returns, nor do we know if he's even ready to return right now. There's one thing that we do know though. The Titans have to run the ball because they have one of the most depleted wide receiver cores in the league. Even in a blowout loss to the Patriots, they stayed committed to the run. Foreman is a solid add for this week. Number five, Dontrell Hilliard. In week 12, Dontrell Hilliard had 12 carries for 131 yards and one touchdown in a very even split with Donta Foreman. Jeremy McNichols, as I mentioned, may return in week 14, but I'm not overly concerned because the Titans' run game in week 12 before the bye week was highly effective with Hilliard and Foreman. 
If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now the Titans are broke as a whole, but that running game has worked itself out after the Titans released Adrian Peterson. The Titans faced Jacksonville this week, followed by Pittsburgh. Those are two favorable matchups for the run game, and the Titans will still likely lean on the run moving forward. We've seen Hilliard put up fantasy numbers with limited carries on the ground and high volume through the air, and then we've seen the reverse, where the vast majority of his work came on the ground with very little through the air, and he still had very good results. I think his place within this Titans offense is solidified. Number four, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Because the Packers were on a bye week last week, and because people probably don't trust him, Marquez Valdez-Scantling is still very available on waivers. But in his past two games, it's been very promising. In week 11, he caught four of 10 targets for 123 yards. In week 12, he caught four of nine targets for 50 yards. Despite the toe issues, Aaron Rodgers continues to throw for high volume and MVS is a big beneficiary. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the offense has really been clicking over these past two games, with more than 30 points in each of those games after failing to reach that mark since September. I think the Packers continue down this path and I like the matchups moving forward for MVS. Number three, Devonta Parker. Devontae Parker returned from a four game absence going five of five for 62 yards. Now I don't think there's any question who the alpha is in this offense. Jalen Waddle caught nine of 11 targets for 90 yards and they had a very similar snap count. On top of that, Mike Gesicki was also a target hog, catching seven of his 11 targets. But I think that Parker's place in this offense is still well worth a roster. And he's on a bye week this week, so he won't be usable. But perhaps that means that people will overlook him and you'll be able to snag him on the cheap. Number two, KJ Osborne. We talked about Tyler Conklin and it is very similar for KJ Osborne. With Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and Dalvin Cook, and now Madison, there's just way too much talent in that Minnesota offense that limits opportunities for KJ Osborne. Prior to week 13, he hadn't seen a snap count higher than 55% since week five, but he is in fact the wide receiver three in that offense. The role just hadn't really meant a whole lot in terms of consistency and opportunity. But with Adam Thielen going down early in this week's game, Osborne saw a 92% snap count and caught four of his seven targets for 47 yards and one touchdown. Through week 12 in PPR, Adam Thielen was the wide receiver seven, scoring 191.8 fantasy points total and averaging 17.4 points per game. All of that production can't just go to Justin Jefferson. Osborne has a huge opportunity to step up. Number one, Taysom Hill. In his first game as the Saints quarterback this season, Hill completed 19 of 41 passes for 264 yards, two touchdowns and four interceptions with a whopping 101 yards on the ground. He is a QB one. And despite the fact that he injured his finger, which did appear to hinder him from a passing perspective on Thursday night, his rushing upside is just way too strong to fade him even if the finger injury affects his accuracy. Hill will be playing through the injury, meaning that he's someone that you want to prioritize on waivers this week. As someone who rosters Alvin Kamara in multiple leagues and has been patiently waiting for his return, I loathe this situation in New Orleans, but as an objective fantasy analyst, Hill has to be rostered. The opportunity is huge here. And that wraps things up for this week's waiver wire ads. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Fantasy Pros across all platforms and come back next week for another round of waiver wire ads.